Texans linebacker Denzel Perriman suspended three games for being too rough. Let's get into it. There's four things that come to mind. Let's get into them here in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Tuesday is supposed to be the quiet day for the Texans, but today we got some big news. Denzel Perriman suspended for three games. What does it mean? Why did it happen? Uh, and where did the Texans go from here? I got four big thoughts on this. It is the locker room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central on Sports Radio 610 and the Odyssey app. Subscribe, like, ride along. Number one source for Texans digital content. Uh, we're going to have an exclusive interview with the player off the field on Thursday, tomorrow on the show. So the big news, uh, Denzel Perriman suspended three games uh, for being too rough. Uh, here is the statement from the NFL, courtesy of uh, Ian Rappaport. Uh, Denzel Perriman of the Houston Texans has been suspended without pay for three games for repeated violations of playing rules intended to protect the health and safety of players, including during Sunday's game against the Cincinnati Bengals, John Runyon issued the suspension for a violation of Rule 12, Section 2, Article 10, which states it is a foul if a player lowers his head and makes forcible contact with his helmet on an opponent. Now, Perryman can, uh, he's allowed to appeal the suspension. Kareem Jackson got a four game suspension. Uh, he got his uh, tweaked down a little bit. So, Denzel is probably going to go through that process. Uh, but if it holds up, he will miss three games uh, without pay, which is very, very expensive uh, for, for Denzel Perriman. But we, we will see how this goes. So what does it all mean? I got four main thoughts. Be sure to get your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe, like, ride along. Appreciate you for coming through. Uh, thought one is just the overall reaction to the decision. Look, I'm not one of these guys that's going to sit here and say this is, the, you know, wussification. Um, I'm not just going to blindly defend Texans. Uh, we saw this happen to Kareem Jackson, so it's not unprecedented. Unprecedented. It seems like something that they're kind of doing. Um, I will say, though, like the Jamar Chase play, that's a hard situation for Denzel Perriman to be in. And it's kind of hard when that's the straw that, you know, broke the camel's back. I, that was a tough situation. Like if wide receivers are going to start sliding and giving themselves up when they're in the middle of the field or running with the ball, that that's going to be hard for a lot of guys. Uh, but as far as the suspension itself, I'm not really up in arms in it. The NFL is kind of uh, leaning this way. And let's be honest, uh, Denzel Perriman and Kareem Jackson at this point in his career, uh, they're probably easy guys to make examples of. So Reaction to the decision, I, I don't think it's like a, a a complete, you know, disgrace. I don't, I'm, I'm not up in arms about it. I see what the NFL is trying to do. I just think that the Jamar Chase, like that example, kind of a rough one. Uh, although there's been other examples throughout Perriman's career, it could be kind of like a lifetime achievement suspension. Uh, thought two, if he is suspended three games, what does this mean for the Texans? This is This is obviously... Uh, a Texan stream, Texans digital content. Um, what does it mean for the Texans? Well, could I interest you in a stat? No, I'm not trying to lead you in any direction. I'm just giving you the stat. Uh, the Texans are two and four with Perriman and they're three and oh without him. And in some of these losses, coverage in the middle of the field has been a big problem uh, against Atlanta. We saw it against Indianapolis. Every loss that the Texans have had, Denzel Perriman's been out there. And Denzel Perriman, we saw him talk about it on Twitter. Uh, he struggled in coverage. He hasn't been good in coverage. And that's not his strength. Uh, so as far as trying to find ways to win uh, games without him, I think Toho Toho should be back this week from concussion protocol. And then you're, you'll, you'll probably sprinkle in some guys. Christian Harris is playing a lot better. Um, the Texans are undefeated when Perriman misses games coincidence maybe so uh but the limitations are clear he's dev definitely not a three down linebacker at this point but he does he does bring some stuff to the table and he's actually been playing playing pretty decently but they are three and oh without him two and four with 41 tackles uh and a half sack on the season along with the uh the struggles in coverage uh which he has addressed so 
as far as the Texans functioning without Perriman, I, I don't, you know, I, you'd rather have him than not have him, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, and they've shown that they can win games without him. And, they, and they've beaten a couple of uh, good teams without Perriman. So that's thought number two, uh, the Texans without Perriman. Thought number three, uh, the bright side um, of the suspension. And I'm not even going to throw out the 3-0 and thing. I threw that out earlier. Uh, the bright side of this suspension is Perriman, the way that he plays, he's already had to miss three games. And I think three weeks of rest for him might not be the worst thing. And if you look at the Texans' schedule and, and what they're about to go against, they're going against an Arizona team that's somewhat of a finesse squad. Jacksonville can run the ball, um, but you've already beaten Jacksonville without Denzel Perriman. Um, and then you're going to uh, you're going to face Denver, uh, and Denver you you can probably figure something out without him there. Although you 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 might want to want to have him against Denver because they're physical. But assuming that he misses all three games, and again this could get appealed, uh, Denzel Perriman will be able to rest his body because the manner in which he plays uh, is very physical, and he'll be rested up for some very physical football games. Uh, Cleveland, uh, Tennessee, they're, they're obviously going to try to run the rock with Derrick Henry. Uh, the, the games after this, Indianapolis, um, you're going to, you're, you're going to need Perriman, uh, in those types of games. So resting up, I, I just think that he, the way that he plays leads to him kind of getting banged up a little bit. So it might not be the worst thing for him to be able to ice up a little bit. Uh, and we've already seen the Texans win without him. So that's thought number three the bright side of the suspension. Now here's the biggest concern that I have uh, with the suspension. And again, subscribe, like right along locker room, number one source for Texans daily digital content. Uh, listen to me Monday through Friday, 10 to two central sports radio, six ten, the Odyssey app um, for the best Texans coverage uh, that you can get along with John Lopez uh, and figgy fig thought. Number four, how does Denzel Perriman come back from this? Because we know he's not hes not a solid three-down linebacker. He has coverage limitations. He's a very physical guy, and he's someone that is, is an asset to a football team. But if Denzel Perriman's going to lose nearly a third of a million dollars, 300000 whatever it is, for playing too rough, does he now adjust the way he plays? And if he adjusts the way he plays... How effective can he be? I'm not going to speak in absolutes and say he's not going to be good because maybe he can adjust and maybe maybe he figures it out. But you got to think that the value that Denzel Perriman brings and, and the way in which the people that that talk the best about him from D'Amico Ryan's down, when they talk about him, they talk about how physical he is. And I know you can play physical football without being dirty, but the mindset that Denzel Perriman has when he steps on the football field, does he just say F it and keep doing what he does? Or does he change the way he plays? And if he changes the way he plays, is he going to add the same value that he adds right now? Because as we said, in coverage, it's not pretty. It's not great. Uh, and he's given you everything he can give you. But is he now going to change the way he plays football? Because A, they're taking away games from him. And they're also taking away, and B, they're taking away money from him. So does he change that, and what will the value be? That's the most concerning thing moving forward. You've shown that you can win games without him, uh, but when he comes back, is he going to be the same guy that had value for this squad? It's something to keep an eye on. The NFL, though, they've made a decision. Not too much beef uh, with that decision. Kind of just is what it is at this point. Be on the lookout for the injury report tomorrow. We'll know how shorthanded the Texans could be. Uh, will Toa Toa return to practice? Uh, are we going to see the 23 guys on the injury report? Are some of the guys who gutted it out now going to be on the injury report? Uh, it's going to be an interesting Wednesday. It's going to be an interesting process up to Sunday with Kyler Murray coming in town. I'll be honest with you. I'm starting to have a healthy amount of respect slash fear uh, of Kyler Murray.
Subscribe, like, ride along, and always remember when it comes to this Texan stuff, we're all in it together. Appreciate you for coming through. We really do. We the source. We the post of the city Let's too. Go. Landlock. Got the game in the headlock. Localized every time. Can't stop. Won't stop. Yeah. We top two and we not two. Plugged in daily digital on YouTube. Uh, we got taste for days.